Michigan Replay with Lloyd Carr and Jim Brandstatter. You believe with an unshatterable belief you can do anything you want to do when you play together. And that's what you did today. You didn't play perfect, but you played with great heart, you played with great spirit. And nobody, you did something that nobody in this nation, outside of this room, thought you could do. You'll have that for the rest of your life. A Michigan replay exclusive in the locker room after a victory over Ohio State. The final score, Michigan 31, Ohio State 23. Lloyd, life is good. <laughs> Oh, it was a beautiful day. It was a beautiful day all around, and uh, I know that you talked about it for the kids, the seniors, your entire staff. What a great, great victory this was. Came down to a group of guys that uh, believed they could do something, and, and Ohio State's a great football team, Jim, and, and um, so to put it all together, it's really the first time this year that we played from the beginning of a game to the end of the game. Uh, with great emotion and intensity. Let's take a look at the first half Nike highlights. Eddie George got out on you on their first possession. This had to worry a little bit that they were able to run. They ran the ball effectively with cutback plays, but uh, they didn't break any big ones. And uh, I, I felt that if we didn't give them any easy touchdowns, Jim, we were going to have a great chance to win. Here's a pass to their big fullback, Sualua, gets him down inside the red zone. And I thought this was key. They had opportunities inside your red zone in the first half twice and had to take three instead of six. When anytime you come out of there and, and Clarence Thompson makes a big play, he's been a big play guy all year long and uh, made the sack that uh, forced the field goal. They kick the field goal. Now this hits the right upright and pops through. So it's a three to nothing score. But you say the key to the game was your first possession. We talked all week long, Jim, about getting off to a fast start, getting ahead so that our crowd would be a big factor in the game, and that's exactly what happened. How about Tamunga? Over 300 yards, the mo most yardage in a single season by any Michigan back. Jim, I thought our offensive line took control of the game early. Tamunga ran extremely well, and we uh, punched a lot of great uh, plays out of there. And there's your touchdown, the pass to Clarence Williams, the young freshman, and put you on top 7-3. Brian made a heck of a play there, uh, throwing the ball on the run, and Clarence is a sure-handed freshman. He's had a great year, and he certainly had a great day today. Ohio State comes back, and here is Terry Glenn making a catch and getting a first down. But a third and long, and now you got him in a third and four, and they go over the middle to, to uh, Eddie George. Well, here again, you see a lot of guys around the ball, even the big play guys. Glenn did not break out of there for a big play. And that, that became uh, the, the way we knew we had a great chance to win when we, when we were pursuing and knocking the ball around as well as we did. Here they are again in the red zone, and you stuff them. Will Carr comes up with a big play, and David Bowens got up the field. Jim, a true freshman, and uh, again, they have to settle for a field goal. And that's big, because they're inside the 10 twice. They only come away with six. It's 7-6 at this point, and then you guys make some great plays coming out of your own end. Brian makes a big throw here to Omani on third down to keep, and certainly we did not want to have to punt out of the, our own end zone there. Here comes that man to Munga again. Just what, what can you say about uh, the kind of runs that he had uh, consistently throughout the day? Then you got a young freshman that came in in a big game like this. Ty Streets makes a big play on third down. Ty Streets is another one of those young guys that uh, has made some plays, got an opportunity to play. And, uh, I, I know he was a nervous guy in there, Jim, when that <laughs> ball was coming to him. You couldn't get in, but you get the three points on the board. So it's a 10-6 lead right now. And, and you hold the high state. You continue to hold the high state. Just before the half, you start to move it again. Twice we had real good field position, Jim, and stopped ourselves with interception. Moving the ball down, and here we come. Uh, this is the one that hurts you. Well, I think uh, we're throwing into a two-deep zone there. He threw the ball up a little bit high and uh, gave them an opportunity just before the half yeah. to get back. Were you a little upset that Ohio State was able to move it this quickly with little time left to get down in position? Well, they dinked the ball on the screen here. We missed a couple of tackles there, and that's probably the longest uh, play of the day. 
for Ohio State, and uh, and it led the three points, Jim, just before the end of the half. Here's another little big pass. This time they go to their fullback. Again, we had good pressure. Every time Hoyne is throwing the ball, we're getting to him. Woodson makes a good play out of bounds there, but uh, we should have gone in uh, with a 10 uh, 10-6 lead at the half. It turns out halftime is 10-9. At that point, I thought you had dominated Ohio State and only led by a point. Did you go to the locker room just a little disappointed? Well, I was extremely happy the way our defense had played. We had not given up a big play. We were pressuring Hoyne. He was not standing back there. Offensively, we were playing extremely well, except for the turnovers. And uh, we, we had an opportunity to get uh, probably three more points in there through an interception. Uh, I told him at the half, look, we have not played our best half. And uh, that locker room, there was an electricity in there. Something was going to happen, and it was a Michigan victory over the number two team in the country. Don't go away. When we come back, we'll take a look at the second half. But first, we hear from the guy who got two picks against the Buckeyes. They did their talking during the week, and we did ours during the game. And, you know, that's all we had to do, come out here and prove ourselves that we can win the big game, and we came out there and did that. Coming up, you know, stopping the run for the eighth man and making sure they didn't give up the big play against them. And, you know, Woodson come up with the interception. He did a great job today. Trent Zankowitz, old number 76. Well, I love that number. And a uh, kid from Ohio, he had to be delighted with his victory. Cleveland, uh, St. Ignatius, and uh, high school player of the year, uh, just like uh, Woodson was last year. So those guys are happy to go back home. 10-9, you're coming out to begin the second half. Talk to me about what your feeling is on what you want to see happen. Well, we talked about uh, kicking the ball deep and forcing Ohio State to punt and Jim, something even better happened. Yeah, it was one of those deals where you're sitting there thinking about it. Here we see the beginning of the second half Nike highlights. The interception by Woodson on the first play of the half. Great play, but a big, big change in momentum. And now our offense has great field position and uh, the way we had been running the football, we were very confident. And uh, talk about a hole, look at that that Tamunga has. Well, Amani's down there getting a good block, and Tamunga on the cutback runs gets us down inside. Brian makes a great throw here. Drill the ball to Mark Campbell, a young kid who's really come on, Jim. Third and one, quarterback sneak scores, and that is a huge touchdown, because if it's fourth down, you got a tough decision. Hey, I thought uh, Fred made a great call there because I was nervous. I didn't know whether I to go on and go ahead and go for it. I was uh, debating that. Third and nine, they hit the tight end, but look at the tackling. You hold them short of a first down. Jim, we were tremendous on third down uh, situations against Ohio State's offense. Here, they mix it up on you. Vrabel, the defensive end, actually backs into pass coverage, makes a big interception. Well, they had a great call on there, and there was no way for Brian to know that uh, Vrabel would rush in, would uh, drop out and intercept the ball. They get a big play to their tight end, Dudley, down to the one-yard line, and this is the one play where you couldn't hold them up. They did a good job taking advantage of a turnover, and uh, now they're back uh, knocking on the door to tie it up. They go for two, but don't get it. And it's 17-15, stays that way, and that's a big momentum shifter. Well, that two-point deficit was uh, a comfort zone for us, and now uh, we begin to run the ball. And Tamunga is running as hard, carried three guys 15 yards. Jim, those guys up front, uh, I know how proud you were of them, and all those guys that ever played uh, the offensive line at Michigan knows what a job they did for them. Clarence Williams then goes in 24-15 at this point, and you got to be thinking, uh, hey, when we got some things going. Well, when was the last time a freshman scored two touchdowns in that game? And our defense uh, continued to harass uh, Hoyne all day long, and I thought that was probably the biggest factor in the game defensively. And here's that freshman again, uh, getting 14 yards. Great job by Clarence. And then you got a great big pass play to your tight end. Well, Brian stood in there, and, and uh, this big guy here, he's had a great year and played banged up, injured all year long, and just keeps going, and he's had a great year. Jay Reimers now. Bianca Batuka then goes in for the score, and with 7.55 left to play, uh, you've got a 31-15 lead. It's uh, feeling pretty good at this point, aren't you? And Jim now takes two touchdowns and two uh, two-point conversions to tie. 
So we're telling our defense, just tackle them, keep them in bounds, and uh, try to get the ball loose. Don't let anybody get behind them. You didn't do that, but here they get Tillman uh, with quite a bit of room uh, cushioned by Woody Hankins. This is a powerful offensive team, Jim. They protected the passer well in this drive. Coyne hit some good passes, and now he uh, scrambles out of here and kept the drive alive and gets the ball down inside the red zone. It was actually the first time that they really put together a good long drive and came up with a score. The pass here to Tillman gets in at 31-23 now with the two-point conversion. Are you getting a little nervous? I'm nervous. I'm <laughs> nervous because we're starting to tire a little bit defensively. And uh, we, it's important here for us to maintain possession of the ball, Jim, as long as we can. Big third down conversion there. It does get you the first down, but you have to turn it back to them. And they start coming back. Well, they're, they're, uh, they got a lot of weapons, but our defense hung in there. We talked all week long about it coming down to a fourth period uh, stop, either uh, defensively or offensively. And here, going to Glenn and Woodson makes just, as you said, one of the best interceptions you've ever seen. Jim, that was a tremendous defensive play. Now, I'm just wanting him to uh, kneel down and uh, don't fumble the ball back to him. 31-23, the final. Uh, just a great victory for, for you, but for this team and this program. Uh, because there had been some criticism when you were named the permanent head coach. Lynn lost who, to Penn. who criticized that? Well, I read it in a small little newspaper yeah, somewhere. I okay? hadn't heard anything about it. You that. hadn't? No. Oh, isn't that amazing? <laughs> well, you probably don't read the newspapers. This is smart on your uh, part. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, it, it just I asked you after the game Saturday. Vindication maybe a little? Well, I, I feel uh, good for Joe Roberson because I'm sure he took uh, some of that heat too. But, Jim, the truth is... We started this season with one of the great wins in Michigan history coming back from a big deficit. And then um, we lost some games in there that were heartbreakers. Uh, twice we have a chance to win it in the fourth quarter and we don't uh, sustain the drives. And uh, we talked all week long about this game defining the season. If we lose, uh, we're all disappointed with the season. And if we win, it's a season that we can be very proud of. And uh, I know that we all feel that way. It is a season the Wolverines can be very proud of indeed. Capped off of the 31-23 win over the Buckeyes. So don't go away when we come back. We'll meet Merck and Amani up close. But first, Tamunga, 300 yards worth, talks after the Ohio State win. At the office, man, all week we're like that. Dear companies like I said, just follow us. We're going to block for you. And that's all I did. And he did what he told me he was going to do. So, I mean, it's crazy to the offensive mind. I, you know, this is all the job is ran. You know, I just did what I, I was supposed to do. This is the story of two receivers, one from California, the other from Texas. Somehow they both found their way to Ann Arbor, Michigan in a rougher climate than their homes. Since their arrival, all they've done is make big play after big play for the Wolverine football program. As Amani Toomer and Mercury Hayes close out their careers at Michigan, Michigan Replay looks back, with their help, at two careers full of memories. Oh yeah, we definitely get along. I mean, we've been along for four years. I mean, we had... We definitely enjoy each other's company. We pick each other up when we're down, and uh, you know, you know, we help each other through the valleys. You know, and it's just a, you know, it's a good relationship since the you know, first day we walked on campus. Oh, I have no regrets, but it's just the thought of coming. Like you know, you make different. Uh, you you go out to practice some days. You're like, dog, man, what if I was back in Texas? We wouldn't have to worry about that. But I mean, I have I have had a great experience here for us, football and school. So. I think I made the right choice. It was another catch, but I mean, it just so happened when it happened, you know, the last play of the game, the second, you know, ticked off the clock and stuff like that. I mean, it's not like a, you know, an acrobatical catch, you know, that, you know, something like I made, you know, against Ohio State, something like that two years ago. The player I remember most was, um, was uh, my sophomore year when we were playing in Illinois. And um, I, I caught a pass and I, I ran a 50 some yard touchdown. I mean, that was the, the, um, the play that really signified to me that I could play on the major college level. The Ohio State catch because of, um, you know, because of the situation, 
that we was coming in the ball game and all that kind of, all that kind of stuff reflects back and then you know Ohio State Michigan State big rivalry and stuff like that so I'll pick the Ohio State kids <laughs> I think the only need will come from our teammates. You know, when one guy has a good week, then our teammates you know, could, would say stuff like, uh, you know, we got, you know, at least we got one receiver and something like that. To the other, the opposite guy who didn't really kick, didn't catch the balls. And I think that really keeps us going, you know. I was far away from home, but I mean, it was always good when people would come up and call you up and say, oh yeah, good game last week and, and all that kind of stuff. And I think that it was an advantage to come to Michigan because you're on TV almost every week and, uh, get to perform in front of a large, you know, a large crowd and a large audience. You come in here and you think it's, you know, like the crew visit, hey, you know, you get with your friends, you're going to do this and that, but you forget about what it really takes to be a true champion. And I think that, you know, Michigan really showed me how to, as far as conditioning and stuff like that, how to become a champion. Uh, these two have been just great over the years, and it's going to be a long time before you get two this good at the same time. Jim, their practice uh, performance set a standard that uh, is going to be hard to match. Uh, they, they've been fun, and uh, they they get they uh, come into their senior year with a new quarterback, and uh, some of their statistics may not be what they wanted them to be, but they've been wonderful team leaders. You bet they have. And if you want to honor Mercury and Amani and all the seniors of this team that were victorious over Ohio State, be sure and uh, be there at the Michigan football bust. It's coming up Monday, December 4th at the Laurel Manor in Livonia. For ticket information, and there are tickets available, call area code 313-675-BUST. And they'll get the tickets to you so that you can honor the seniors, Mercury and Amani, and the whole gang after their victory over Ohio State.